So we've come to that time of year again, it's Christmas, and I thought I'd do a recap video of 2013. Now it's been an absolutely massive year for me on YouTube. My channel has grown leaps and bounds and I wouldn't be in that position if it wasn't for you guys. So, And I know a lot of guys are here now that weren't here when my growth first started. So I thought I'd just recap everything and go through the things, the highlights, the low points, and really what happened in Westies 2013. Now, I think a safe place to start is probably March 2013. Now, for those of you in the Battlefield community, that was when Battlefield 3 Endgame's DLC was released. And at that point, I thought I'd try and cover it as much as possible on my channel. I tried to do the same with Aftermath, uh, but it didn't really play out as well. I had some commitments that I needed to attend to. Uh, but for when it came to Endgame, everything was clear. I, I had a few days free, so I thought I'd go all out on it and uh, try and cover it as much as possible. And boy oh boy, did that pay off. Um, I never thought I'd get the reaction that I did, but all I remember was in that three day period I grew something like a thousand subscribers and got to about two thousand. So in that space alone, it showed me what I could do with my YouTube channel and really did give me a push to say, look, you can do something with this if you really try. And that was sort of the impetus, the starting point for me of thinking, I really could make something of my YouTube channel, I really enjoy doing it, but this sort of was a big reward for doing something that I really enjoyed and putting all that effort in. And that really started me on my journey. During that end game period, I think I uploaded about 22 videos over the space of 14 days, so I really did grind out a lot of content and upload it onto my channel. A lot of it was Easter egg finding, and that's still evident in my Battlefield 4 stuff that I still do. But literally, that DLC was full of Easter eggs. I mean, it was pretty much an Easter egg hunt. I mean, you could probably walk around for five minutes and find another one. It wasn't too difficult. And it was kind of around that point as well where I started to interact with my subscribers a lot more. I found that replying to comments and uh, interacting with you guys on Twitter uh, made things really friendly. And I don't really see why now people don't do it. Because when I first started doing it, obviously you get a positive response. It makes me feel good that you guys are even commenting on the video anyway. If I can reply to as many as I can, you guys get the answers that you're looking for. You get to interact with me, the guy who's made the video at the end of the day. And it just makes it one big conversation and it's really rewarding for everybody. If I was to look back now and I hadn't started doing that, I hadn't replied to comments as I used to, or hadn't started doing that, I wouldn't be in this position right now, I don't think. I feel that if I reply to comments or interact with you guys as much as I can, then obviously I'm interacting with the community that I'm building and therefore just basically spreading the message or getting words out and things like that. And even I appreciate it because you guys are asking me questions and that's great because I like, I like having conversations. And I just don't think my channel would be in the position that it is now if I wasn't as interacting as much as I am with you guys. Moving on from the Endgame DLC, we come to the Battlefield 4 hype. Now, we first started to sort of know some details about Battlefield 4 in the same month as the Endgame DLC, which sort of was a stupid decision at the time, but was paying off for DICE and EA in terms of that. And that's where my channel really started to take off again. I started to post Battlefield 4 videos and they got a brilliant reception. I posted Battlefield 3 videos and I didn't get a very good reception. So it was obvious to me that you guys weren't interested in Battlefield 3 anymore. So I switched into high gear and started kicking out Battlefield 4 videos left, right and centre. Now of course my channel used to mainly focus on gameplays and news. Now I branched out into different commentaries and things like that. But at that point in time, when news came about, people wanted to know about it. Battlefield 4 was a brand new game and we didn't know much about it, so any news that I could get to you guys looked to be greatly appreciated because my view count doubled, my like ratios doubled, I got comments through the roof. I was struggling to keep up with the amount of comments and even at that point I had around 5,000 subscribers and I was struggling to keep up with the comments because the response was just so good. At that point in time, I started to look around YouTube and think, hey, there's some other channels that are growing at sort of the same pace with me, at Battlefield 4 news and information, gameplays of Battlefield 3, talking about Battlefield 4 features that are coming up. And that's where I met Matt the Musketeer. Now, I can quite confidently say, and this is the full truth, my channel would not be where it is right now if it wasn't for Matt the Musketeer. We have so many ideas to start off with. And even in the early days when we were just talking to each other on Skype, Twitter direct message, the, the ideas that were flowing out were really good. And we always had an idea of what video was coming up next. We'd always talk to each other about, oh, if you're going to release that video, I'll do this one. 
And honestly, it worked. The two of us releasing videos at that kind of rate with the information that differed on different videos so that everybody got different points of view seemed to work so well. And our channels just skyrocketed. And he's not just good to talk about Battlefield and YouTube with. He's a genuinely nice guy. And I consider him one of my closest friends. And I have to say, Matt, thank you so much for supporting my channel through the growth period of Battlefield 4. And even now, you still do. And I can't thank you enough because... I wouldn't be in this position now if it wasn't for you. At that point, I knew there was somebody on YouTube that I could make videos with. Obviously, me and Matt started the series called The Jewel. We did a couple of videos called Battle Chat, where we talk about things that were going on with Battlefield. And you guys responded really positively for that. I think collaborations on YouTube are really important, especially if you want to sort of cross-promote your channels with other people and things like that. But ultimately, it's the entertainment value. If you've got two people in the same video, it's not just one point of view all the time. It's not just one voice. There's somebody else in there too. At that point, we're getting towards May and June. We're starting to see some real Battlefield 4 gameplay coming out, and our channels continue to grow at an alarming rate. Our videos were being released once every two days, and they were competing in terms of views, likes, and comments with people like Level Cap and Matimio, who are right at the top of the Battlefield community in terms of YouTubers. And at that point, for me, that was absolutely astounding. And at the point, and at that point, I just thought I wouldn't be there if it wasn't for Matt and all you guys. You guys who liked my videos at that point. As soon as you watched the video, some people would even comment saying, I've liked the video, now I'll watch it. That to me meant that I had a really loyal subscriber base. And I cannot thank you enough for that. At that point in time, my channel was growing so fast, I couldn't even keep up with the subscriber count. I couldn't keep up with the amount of comments coming through. I think I had to put at some point, at the end of the video, I had to say, I can't reply to all your comments anymore. Because I couldn't. It was downheartening for me that I couldn't do that. But I felt the need to tell you because I was so involved with my subscribers, always making sure I replied to as many comments as I could, that I felt bad for not replying. So at that point, it was just mind boggling how fast my channel was growing. And then we come to the Battlefield 4 beta. Now, at this point, I'm not exactly sure what happened. All I know is that the growth that I was getting during the Battlefield 4 hype stopped completely and dropped off massively. At some point in time, I think I gained 4,000 subscribers in 30 days. Now, that was just amazing at that point in time. And then suddenly, as soon as the beta was released, literally on the 1st of November, that completely stopped. Now, I don't know whether it was that people flooded YouTube with Battlefield 4 videos, so mine didn't get seen anymore, or the fact that everyone was playing the game and they weren't watching YouTube videos, I'm not sure. But during the beta period, that was it. My channel just sort of landslided back down to where it was all the way back in March. And for me, I was still growing and I appreciated every subscriber that came through. But it was quite disheartening, I have to say. Now, I might sound a little bit selfish when I say that, but when you get used to something and then it changes, it's hard to adapt to that. So when I was making videos, I wasn't as happy. I wasn't as flamboyant or maybe upbeat as I was before when I was making the video. I didn't feel like I was putting my full effort into it. And I really actually was making a conscious decision as to whether I wanted to continue YouTube the same way that I did then as I do now. Because when that growth goes away, you lose a lot of enthusiasm to keep going because you think people aren't interested in what you're doing. And I know that sounds very self-centered, but it's how you feel. Honestly, if you were in the same position, you would have felt like that. And it was quite disheartening. I still appreciated every single comment, every single like, every single view that came through. I still appreciated it. But it's just the difference in, in sort of how I was growing and then suddenly it dropped off. And I still don't really have an explanation as to why, but it remedied itself in the end. And then we come to the full Battlefield 4 release, and my channel skyrocketed again. I had a plan, and I executed it. I started with introductory videos, just a bit of gameplay, getting it out there, getting out my first impressions as soon as I could, making sure that there were videos out there for you guys to watch. Now, I did sort of break the starting line a little bit, uh, kind of went on a couple of days early using VPN Airways, <laughs> but... I thought that that was a good idea to make sure that there were guys out there that weren't willing to do that. So I was there to provide a video for you to see what Battlefield 4 was like, how it was performing on day one, whether it worked or not. And I think that I did really well in that aspect. 
especially now because I kicked in with my weapon reviews, I've kicked in with my general commentaries that I really love doing and it's obvious that you guys like it as well because they ultimately do better than any other video on my channel and I was still there doing my news videos because as more stuff came out, as more information was released about the game, more was found out, we started to know about China Rising and Second Assault, I was there to give you those videos and the support I got my god, it was mind-boggling, as if I'd hit rock bottom and I was then sky high again. And I guess it was just about momentum and I still appreciate it because all the way through that, all the way through since March, all the way coming through to now, there has been no relent in the amount of people supporting my videos. There's always been somebody there going, this is a good video, make sure you do this or can you do that, I'd really like to see this on your channel. And ultimately, with without you guys there would be no channel. There wouldn't be 29,000 subscribers. There wouldn't be that many views of video. There wouldn't be giveaways. And my God, if there's no giveaways, I feel heartbroken. But without you guys, there wouldn't be a Westie channel on YouTube at the moment. And ultimately, this Christmas, I just want to say thank you to everybody who supported my channel, who's left a like, a comment on three, 300 videos, whatever it is, whatever you've done to support my channel, thank you. Because I'm so grateful for the growth that I've got a hobby here that... I love doing and I'm probably not going to stop doing for a long time and it wouldn't be there if it wasn't for you guys. But that's it, enough from me, I've said my thank yous now, all I want to say is have a Merry Christmas guys to each and every one of you and your families and make sure you have an absolutely brilliant time. I really hope you get what you want this Christmas, whether it be a new graphics card, it be a new car, a pair of boots, a pair of socks, a hat, whatever it happens to be, I really hope you have an absolutely fantastic Christmas and I'll see you guys in the next video. We'll